Why not? Please, Dick. I... Oh, you what? You know, up to now, you haven't offered me one legitimate reason. You won't listen. Of course I won't. If you really love me, you'd marry me. It would only bring on a lot of difficulties. Oh, darling, what kind of difficulties? Well, for one thing, John Martin would stop your allowance. Well, what if he does? What difference does it make? It doesn't worry me. No, but it worries me. What would you do? Go to work. You never have. Well, it might do me a lot of good. Oh, listen. You seem to forget that within a year I'm coming into the money that Dad left me. What about that? You won't come into it if you marry me. What are you talking about? John Martin will find some way of doing you out of it. Oh, that's ridiculous. You may think so. Listen. John Martin was my father's best friend. Well, he's not mine. You just think that because you work in his office. No, Dick, it isn't that. Now, so he's only the executor of my father's estate. It's none of his business whom I marry. You make it his business. Good night, Dick. I can't talk about it anymore. Oh, but Jenny, please. Jenny, you've got to listen to me. Please, Dick. Now, you're not being fair. This can't go on. Now, say good night like a good boy and forget it. Good night. Oh, no, sir. No, I won't say good night until you promise to marry me. I'm going to. Do you mean it? Yes, when we talk it over. And no more delays? Well, you ought to give a girl a chance to get ready. A week or two. All right, but no longer than that. We'll talk it over tomorrow. Oh, good. Tomorrow, Saturday, we can have all afternoon to ourselves. You're a stubborn little devil. I'm not really stubborn. No. Oh, yes, you sure? are. Say yes. Say yes to what? Mm, most anything. Just say yes. Yes. Don't you always say yes? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, darling. Now, you better run along before I change my mind again. Okay. Good night, Dick. Good night, darling. Oh, Merle, aren't you? Late for me. Late? Gee, my day's just beginning. <laughs> I have to work, you see. I get up early. Well, just the same. A girl's got to have a little fun. What's the matter with your boyfriend? Scotch or just poor? Neither. <laughs> just the same. It must be a terrible boy sticking in your room all the time. I have a lot of stockings to mend. I'll go without them. I'll tell you. Go and get into something stiffy. A bunch of us are going out tonight. You know, good it's aunts. Very and sweet, but Sweet nothing. I just like you, that's all. Sorry. In love, huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, don't fall for the first guy that makes a play for you. Be like me. You know, look around. Don't want to look around. Good night. Thanks all the same. Good night. Maybe tomorrow night or the night after? Maybe. Any luck? For the kid, you mean? Yeah. No, not tonight. I guess one of you is dumb. Well, maybe it's me. But give me time, old sock. Give me time. Sure, they all fall for that happy gas talk sooner yeah, or later. I know they do. Leave her long, Egg. This ain't your party. What's the idea? You may be all right to pull a job with, but you ain't my idea of the end of a perfect day. Jenny Jones, you're letting yourself in for a lot of trouble. Okay, Mr. Martin, I'll do my best. You can count on us, Mr. Martin. Sir, where do you get the stuff? Well, holy cow, what's the matter with that? Well, I don't like it. And I ain't a cow, and I ain't holy. Sit down, sit down. Yes, Mr. Martin. That girl will have Dick married to her unless we act quickly. Yes, sir. I engaged you to do something, not to yes me. Yes, sir. Now, she knows men, and yet you show nothing on for it. Oh, we couldn't get anything. But we could frame something. The uh, boy has to be saved, of course. That about her saying she came from Cortland, and thus unable to find a record of her there? 
That's something. That's how she got the job out of you, isn't it? I mean, pulling the old hometown stuff. Yes, I always like to help someone from home. Something's got to be done away. Do you understand? Lily and Burton are the cleverest people I've ever had. Don't use that word frame up. It's ugly. I have nothing against this girl. Not a thing. But I just can't let Dick throw himself away on someone who, uh, oh, for all we know, might be anything or everything. Sure, anybody would see that. The truth is all we need if you only had the brains to dig it up. Uh, yes, sir. Anything more now? Yes. Get to work. The other door. Oh, it slipped my mind. She's out there. Well, good day, sir. Good day. Yes, Mr. Martin? Get Richard Hamilton for me. Tell him to come to my office right away. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, Mr. Hamilton. I'll tell Mr. Martin you're here. Thanks. around the corner. I'll wait for you down front. Can we go right in, Mr. Hamilton? Thank you. Hello, Dick. Well, what's on your mind? Sit down. I've got a date for one o'clock. Impatient youth. I suppose it's a girl. Uh-huh. Jenny. Jenny? Jenny Jones. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Appears to be a very nice girl. Very nice. Now, where is that confounded thing? What? A wire about your Montana interests. You'll have to leave tonight. Leave tonight? Yes, uh, we may have to appoint a new manager. But I don't want to go now. It won't take long. A few days out there will straighten everything out. Well, what's the matter with Simpson? Dad was satisfied with him. Getting old, my boy. Losing his efficiency. Oh. Well, I won't fire him. Might put somebody into a system. The very thing. The very thing. I don't see why a couple of weeks from now wouldn't do just as no, well. No, no. Somebody out there is diverting some of the money. And we'll have to hold Simpson responsible oh, unless right. you... All right, I'll go. Uh, I'll see about your reservations. You'll be coming back here, won't you? I don't think so. So I'll be busy all afternoon. Leaving so suddenly like this. At the station, then. Eight o'clock. Okay. We've got a lot of things to do this afternoon. We haven't had anything to eat. I don't see any place around here to eat. You don't now, but there soon will be. Oh, what a cute little house. Oh, I don't like that one so well. How do you like the one next door and the one across the street? Well, they're not nearly as nice. I still like this one the best. Well, see if you like the inside as well as you do the out. Have you got the key? Sure, that's what I brought you out to see. Hop out. Oh, Dick, it's a perfect kitchen. <laughs> kind of nice, huh? Nice? I think it's lovely. Do you like it well enough to live in from here? You know, so I come into my door and we can go swing. I've never wanted anything lovelier. Not if we had millions. <laughs> Wash tub. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, Jenny, you're a funny kid. You'd appreciate those tubs if you'd wash your socks in a wash basin as often as I have. <laughs> oh, say, listen, I was just thinking. Do you suppose that marriage license bureau stays open on Saturday afternoons? I don't know. We could go Monday noon, couldn't we? Well, no. Why not? You see, well, I, I didn't want to tell you and spoil the fun of seeing the cottage. Tell me what? Oh, it isn't as serious as all that. I'll be back in a week or ten days. Where are you going? Montana. When? Tonight. You see, somebody's bungling something up there. Mr. I... Martin, send you away. Oh, please don't bring Martin into this. He's sending you out of town just to get you away from me. I know it. Oh, you, you've got him all wrong. We were talking about you this morning. He said something very nice. What did he say? Well, I, I don't exactly Did you remember. tell him we were going to be married? No. Oh, 
Please don't act like that. Well, I suppose it looks foolish, oh, but... Oh, now listen. Now you leave it to me and I'll have old Martin at the wedding giving us his blessing. Come on, smile. There, that's better. That's how I want to remember you while I'm gone. And you won't be more than ten days? Two weeks at the most. And you'll write to me? Every day. How about you? Every day. Every minute you're gone will seem like a year. Oh, but ten days isn't a long time, darling. If you're not back by then, I'm coming after you. Well, I can't see why you had to send Dick, that's all. You knew I wanted him at my party tomorrow night. Well, I think under the circumstances, I did what was best. Oh, you mean the girl in the office? Yes. Why don't you fire her? Why do you keep her around? Well, that's what I intend to do, my dear. In fact, I've just sent for her. Uh, Mr. Martin wants to see you in his office right away. I'd uh, rather you waited in the other room. I'm staying right here. I want to get a close look at her. Do you think she's pretty? Well, how should I know? You sent for me? Yes, yes. Uh, come in. How do you do, Miss Martin? Is it any of your business? I have a report here on you, Miss Jones. You mean you've been spying on me? The Carrick people in my office must be above reproach. According to this, you're not known in Cortland, the town where you said you were born. I needed work. I had no references. This report should prove very interesting to Dick Hamilton. I don't believe you're contemptible enough to show it to Dick. No man will believe in a girl who lies about her past and refuses to give an account of herself. I'll tell Dick all he wants to know about me when the time comes. You mean to tell me that you're not hiding something? Something disgraceful? What I'm hiding, Mr. Martin, concerns myself and, and one other person. Dishonesty of some sort, whatever it is. And I'll not have the son of my old friend mixed up with you. Perhaps Dick will have something to say about that. He's of age, you know. I see what you're getting at. You think I can't keep his money from him. We'll both work. We won't need a lot of money. You'll be telling us next that you and Dick are engaged. We are. Oh, what a laugh. What's your price? I have no price, Mr. Martin. And I've had about all the insults from you I intend to take. No, no, no. I'm only trying to be fair, compensate you and all that sort of thing. Have you ever been really fair to anyone, Mr. Martin? You're being impertinent, Miss Jones. That's your name for it. You'll be sorry for this. Perhaps you will, too. I'm still offering a fair price. I have nothing to sell. I'll say you haven't. Honey, hadn't you better think this over a bit? If you're so sure Dick won't believe in me, why are you trying to buy me off? Because I know girls of your type. I'm trying to save him from a breach of promise suit. You unspeakable cad. Get out. You'll find your pay envelope at the cashier's office. Perhaps I ought to. Ought to what? It doesn't matter. Some other time. You should have gone into your dance. Your song didn't get over. Haskell? Yes, sir? I want that girl watched. For every move reported. And mark this. She's not to get another job in this city. Don't mind me. Or I'll read it later. 
Love letter? Mm-hmm. Oh, so your boyfriend's out of town. Yeah. Been spending late hours at the office? Been looking for work. Gee, kid, don't tell me you've lost your job. Yes, I did. Well, that's tough with your boyfriend away, too. Well, I'll find another. Another boyfriend? No, uh, another job. Well, that ain't so easy. I know a dame that's been pounding the pavements for five months looking for work. Say, I've got an idea for you. We could use another gal down at the joint where I work. I'll speak to the boss about it. That's fine, thanks. Oh, that's all right, I'm big that way. Well, what sort of work is it? Well, it's um, hostessing in a nightclub. I wouldn't know what to do. Oh, they'll tell you what to do. All you have to have is a figure and a few rags. Oh, I see. No, I couldn't do that. Are you going to wait five months for a job, or are you going to let a gal who likes you steer you into some real dough? Well, thanks a lot, but I think I'll try to get a regular job in an office. It's kind of tough on the shoe leather. It will work out. But if you change your mind, just come and see me. Thanks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're sure that's all of them, up to date? Say, I don't hang out of my window waiting for Uncle Sam three times a day for nothing. We won't talk about that, if you please. And no mention of this outside the office. Don't worry. I like to call my numbers. I don't want one pinned on me. I think that's all, Miss Sprague. Gee, that guy must be going nuts out there, wondering why she don't get his letters. Why, uh, <laughs> I see he won't be back for four weeks. And where did you see that? Oh, I read all his letters. <laughs> you know, I get quite a kick out of this plate of tripe. So long. I'll have your room ready in no time, sir. Okay. Couldn't pay the rent, huh? Oh, these six weeks. There you are now, sir. All ready for your thing. Everything clean like and all. Not hard to follow that girl. Her being doesn't pay my rent. And if I ain't got the money, the landlord don't wait on me. Six weeks. I've been real liberal. Well? You need to stand there looking at me like that. This ain't no charitable institution. Then where can I go? I ain't caring where you go. I've been telling you for five weeks I had to have my money. Huh. Nobody pays my bills. Nobody help charity. Can't I help you, sister? No, thanks. I don't believe a word of it. Not a word. Well, I was just as loath as you are to believe anything against her. Then why did you? Well, uh, in the first place, that falsehood about where she was born. That doesn't prove anything against her. How do you do, Miss Price? I... I've got to see Mr. Martin. I'm sorry, Mr. Martin isn't much too busy to see anyone today. Oh, but I've got to see him. I'll sit here and wait until I can. Oh, uh, tell him to come tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Martin. And, uh, get Haskell for me right away. Yes. He's here now? Good. I'm going to see her. I won't believe anything until she tells me herself. Well, you know no girl is going to admit anything irregular. Jenny would. I'd bank on her honesty. Oh, uh, Dick. Why, you haven't told me how you found things. Oh. Well, I got a good man to assist Simpson. That's fine. Splendid. But how are things in general? Oh, all right, I guess. Uh, I'll talk to you about it later. Uh, you know, I was thinking that we might give Simpson a raise. Mr. Martin will see you in the morning and not until then. But if 
if I don't see him now, I don't know what I'll do. Mr. Martha will see you in just a few moments, Mr. Haskell. Okay. Couldn't I... If... I told you, in the morning, Miss Jones. In the morning. I don't suppose it occurs to him, or to you either, that night comes before morning. Honey? Oh, you've been gone centuries. Well, not quite that long. Oh, longer. Well, it's nice of you to say that anyway. Well, I've got to be going. I'm sorry. Well, don't be silly. You're going to have dinner with us. Oh, not tonight. Some other night. You see, I just got off the train. I'm a little dirty. Oh, you're no meanie. Uh, Dick, uh, where will you be a little later? I may want you. Well, in my apartment until I'm cleaned up. And after that? I don't know. Good night, honey. Say, you're hungry, aren't you? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I... I haven't eaten for two days. We've got to do something about that. I see no reason why you, you should concern yourself about my hard luck. And I'd be a little less than human if I wasn't concerned. <laughs> less than human? I know a man like that. Come on, now I'm going to see that you get something to eat. I guess I'd better. I'm beginning to feel a little bit wobbly. Well, I don't wonder. Now, now, just a minute, Dick. I know you're upset about this whole thing, but... You're darn right I'm upset. Jenny wouldn't go to a place like that. If anybody said they saw her there, they're either lying or they mistook somebody else for her. Well, I'm sorry, my boy, but she's at the Parisian Cafe this very minute. Et tout, monsieur? It's too good to be true. <laughs> well, suppose you sample it and find out. Aren't you eating? Oh, I had mine earlier. Now, you go ahead and eat before it gets cold. <laughs> Just the smell makes me a little faint. Here, here, we can't have that. What you need is a good stimulant. I don't, I don't drink. Oh, now, you needn't be afraid. This won't hurt you. Here. Take it. Come on now. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. I'll be all right in a minute. something now. Go ahead. Ah, ah, now little sweetheart mustn't drink so much. It's too early to pass out. Well, what are you standing there staring at? We came here for a little privacy. Drunk. Say, scram you. This is my party. It's all right now. Sit down. No, let me go. Sit let down. me go. You've got to eat something. Oh, 
Come on, give me another little kiss. <laughs> no, you're too drunk to know what you're getting, and you guys only pay for what you know about. Oh, <laughs> good night. I want another kiss. Take him home, brother. Good, good night. night. Good night. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mr. Bartlett, I'm going to have to the nerve of her. Come on, snap out of it, baby. It's a darn shame. A bunch of us ganging up on you. Come on, kid. Getting people out of bed this time of night. Kid. Sort of life is such a thing. Kid, give me that. Oh, she's shamming. That's what she's shamming doing. Shamming my eye. What? Throw it in her face and you'll see how quick she'll come out oh, of it. Oh, shut up, you old bat. Oh, none of your lip, miss. Huh. What's the matter? What's happened? Come on, you ain't. Help get her upstairs. Take this, and you get a doctor. Ah, uh, me be responsible for the bill? Not much. Oh, I'll be responsible for it. Get a move on oh, you. Oh, you. Got a pot about as big as a piece of rice. Starvation. Nervous shock. You mean she's awful sick? She'll need the best of care. Are you a friend of hers? been about as friendly as a rattlesnake. Well, I'm a poor woman, but she can have a room back. She has to go to a hospital. Gee, is it as serious as that, Doc? It's very serious. If she hasn't any money, we'll have to send her to the general hospital. Well, you listen to me, old sawbone. She ain't going to no general hospital, see? Well, She's going to have the best that money can buy. Is there a phone I can use to call an ambulance? Oh, yes, right, right over there on the table. I said the best that money can buy, honey. And when I said she was going to have the best that money could buy, I meant just that, see? And what has all this to do with me, I'd like to know? Just this, that it's your money I'm talking about. My money? Yeah. Just so you get this straight, Jenny Jones is in the Good Hope Sanitarium, in the swellest room they've got. Forty bucks a day, with the best nurses and doctors. So what? So you're going to foot the bill, and you're going to like it. See here, young woman. You're fired. Oh, why don't you get wise to yourself? You were fired when I found that poor little kid crumpled up on the stairs. That's about all out of you, Miss Sprague. No, it isn't. You're going to find out what I think of you, you dirty, sneaking, filthy get rat. Out. No, I won't. Not until you tell me where you're hiding that sap dick. I told you he left this morning. And I said where? And I told you on a boat. And I say what boat? How can I tell you something I don't know? Well, maybe for once in your life you're telling the truth. But when that punk returns, I want to know about it, see? And just to make sure I'll be up here from time to time. No, you're not. I won't have you coming in here. You'd better be careful what you say to me. Are you threatening me? You're writing your own ticket, chump. And just one more thing. You're going to come through with a dough to take care of Jenny or... Or what? Or your name will be plastered all over every newspaper in this town. In a way you won't like. Why, you don't know anything about me. Don't be so sure about that. There, aren't they beautiful? Where's the card? That's more important than the flowers. When are they going to let me see him? I feel fine now. I'll speak to the doctor again, miss. You've been very ill, you know. Yes, I know, but if I could only see him for a minute. Oh, hear his voice over the telephone. If they'd only let me do that, why, I'd be better in no time. Now, please, Miss Jones, you mustn't get excited like this. But there's something he misunderstands, don't you see? Why, if he misunderstood, he wouldn't send you all these lovely flowers. But he won't believe until I explain. There, there, you just relax. You'll make yourself ill again. I'm sorry. I'll try. That's a good girl. But you will speak to the doctor. You bet I will. I don't know what we're going to do. 
going to do? She's been begging me to see if you wouldn't let her talk to him on the phone. Well, I don't know where he is. I've sent more cables than the Navy sent during the war. And maybe you don't think it's cost me something doing it. Getting so every time I go in the park, the cops look at me suspiciously. You receive no replies? Not a peep. I'm afraid we'll have to tell her. What? After me spending all that dough and staying up nights copping his moniker on cards? Copping his moniker? Yeah. You see, I saw it on a bunch of his letters once. But don't remind me of that either. Gee, I wish you'd let me take her out of this morgue. Said it isn't doing her any good anyway. In her present state of mind, no. Ah, oh, so it's all in her head. Yes. I know somebody that could make her forget that guy. Hello, Jenny, old kid. How do you feel today? I feel fine, Millie. Oh, that's great. Why won't they let me see Dick? Won't they let you see him? Well, ain't that dumb. I ain't a doctor or anything, but I can't see how that'd hurt. Do get the telephone, plug it in here, and let me talk to him. Well, I, I can't do that very well. You see, I talked to him on the phone myself today, and he's going away for a couple of weeks. But, but he sent love and everything. I suppose that means Mr. Martin sent him to Montana again. Yeah, that's the place. He was gone six weeks before. Ah, oh, snap out of it, kid. Say, so you're going to get out of this joint today. Really? Mm -hmm. You're coming home with me. Millie, you've been awfully good to me. Ah, cut it out. Anybody be good to you, kid. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Hamilton's residence. Montana yesterday. No, miss. He's been gone for two months. I'm not permitted to say, miss, except that he sailed. You say he sailed? Yes, miss. Sailed on a boat. And he told me before he left that that was all the information that I was to give. Goodbye, miss. Come on, kid. Let's have it. Who sent all those flowers? I did. And the cards? I did. Who paid the hospital bill? And the nurse and the doctor? Oh, I ran across a guy that had a yen to do something for somebody and he paid the bill. I'm going to make you forget that guy. <laughs> ain't so green as it was. Hey, it ain't so green as it was. No. I don't mean her. Huh? <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? You. Why? You're so serious. Sure, I'm serious. Men are never really serious. But I am. <laughs> How about it? About what? You know. How much do you like me? I'm crazy about you. <laughs> I've heard that line before. Well, you needn't tell me about the other guys. It wouldn't take long. For the many? One. How many? One. <laughs> Say, I'm getting kind of tired of talking to the back of your neck. Tell me something I want to know and I'll show you my face. Sure. What? How about this guy, Joe? Is he any good? Any good? Don't he own this junk? Ain't he the smartest guy in the racket? Yeah, so what? Well, if it's still you, I mean, he's got it up into six figures. How about his inside? Is he just as black as the rest of you guys? Say, listen, I don't have to take that kind of lip from no damn. 
Oh, no. No. I've got a raw mind. Exclusively, you mean? Yeah, exclusively. Sort of, uh, well engaged. I don't call it that. Nice people, eh? Hey, listen. Ooh, you scare me. <laughs> well, how about it? What? Hey, oh, I told you. Sure, if there are any wedding bells. Say, if you're trying to put up a bluff, I'm going to call you. We are gathered here to join this man and this woman in the sacred bonds of matrimony. If anyone can show just cause why this man and this woman should not be so joined, let him now speak or forever after hold his peace. Do you, Joe, take this woman for your lawfully wedded wife to have and to hold until death do you part? I do. And you, Jenny, do you take this man for your lawfully wedded husband to love, honor, and obey, to care for in sickness and in health until death do you part? I do. I now pronounce you man and wife. You show sure is beautiful, Mrs. Joe. <laughs> Thanks, Ophelia, but it's the clothes. <laughs> no, ma'am, it ain't just the clothes. And I know, I was a maid up in Mr. Joe's place for three years. Yes, so I heard. And there never was a lady what come up there as beautiful as you is. And you know who else thinks so? Nobody but Mr. Joe. How's it, Joe? See you brought a bodyguard. Yeah. Hello, Bill. Thanks. It looked at me kind of funny when I asked for it. <laughs> Well, Tuffy, I guess jewelers aren't used to seeing a mug like you come in on legitimate business. I don't know what you want to spend all that kind of dough and a few rocks for. Well, I could have got you one for two grand and made myself out of it. Yeah, I know. But this had to be on the level. Mm. Well, thanks, boys. I'll be seeing you. Oh, sir, Joe, I want to talk to you about something. Now, you guys are beginning to give me a pain. All right, come on in. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. You sure is going to be just too gorgeous in this dress. <laughs> she sure is. Yes, sir. Something for you, beautiful. Oh, Joe, not something more. You're a funny little punk. Most dames squawk when you don't bring them things, and you squawk when I do. You don't have to keep giving me things. To make me realize what a swell person you are. I know it. That's why I'm so crazy about you. It makes me believe that you like me for myself instead of the things I give you. Oh, it's lovely, Joe. But you shouldn't. No, I'm not so good at saying those pretty things. I'm telling you how much I love you. I'm letting them talk for me. You're sweet. But you don't have to do any talking. I know how you feel. I figure that if I could be real nice to you, that Sort of help you to forget about that other guy. I have forgotten him. I'd most likely go nuts if I thought that... You needn't think about it anymore. You won't, will you? Of course I won't. You've been more kind to me than anyone's ever been before. So I'm not likely to forget it. It isn't that I've been kind to you that you like me, is it? I married you, didn't I? Sure you did. Isn't that proof enough? Mug. She'll slap your ass down if she sees your puppies parked up on that. Yeah? Don't let her try and get broke with me. I sucked plenty of names in my time. I suppose he stinks pretty, too. <laughs> Shows you what a, what a dame could do to a mug. <laughs> Breaks him soft. Say, hey, listen, yeah. you guys help me lay it on thick, see? So Joe will know we mean business. Sure.
Take your feet off there. Say, what's the matter? I said take them off. All right. Now, what's on your mind? Well, you know what's on our minds, Joe. Woodwine wants an answer. I'm doing all right by myself. Why should I cut a guy like that in for anyway? Well, you know, he's a pretty big guy around here, and I don't think it'd be healthy for you to... My health's all right. If you're worried about yours, you can crawl out. It's okay with me. Oh, gee, you can't get away with ignoring him. And the only way to keep out of a mess is to have a showdown and come to an understanding. I've got an understanding with myself. As long as I play single-handed, I'm sure of a square deal. That's more than I can expect from Budwine. Now, don't get me wrong, and don't think I'm Wilson, Joe. Well, you better not, because I got no room for Welches around me. And get this, I'm not going in any other racket. I don't see how you can keep from it. Well, let's not talk about it anymore. If you don't like the way things are going, you know what you can do. It's okay with me, only I still think you ought to see him. Ready, Joe? Uh, yes, darling. Scram. Hello there. Hello, Jen. Well, Joe, we'll see you down at Jen. I don't like those men, Joe. That makes two of us. I must have them, you know. Joe, would you do something for me? Why, of course I would, darling, anything. Quit this game. You have plenty for us to live on. Yes, I know, but most of my money's tied up in the business right now. But I don't like it. Not respectable enough, is that what you mean? Well, not that exactly. Maybe you should have married that other guy after all. You promised me not to talk about that. Yes, that's right. Well, hurry up. Your memory's gone haywire. Call Joe. And make it plenty tough to get in these joints. But once you're in, it's easy enough to drop a lot of dough. Father, know you come to places like this? Good heavens, no. Dad's so infernally goody goody, it's a wonder he didn't die young. Got a surprise for you. Surprise? Did you ever hear from that girl while you were away? If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it. You mean that it's embarrassing for you to talk about your affairs with other women, is that oh, it? Oh, I mean I just don't care to talk about her, is all. That's amusing. What's amusing about it? For you to talk like that when we're engaged. Still don't wish her any hard luck. She doesn't need your best wishes, darling. You get a flash of her. What's eating you, kid? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Just things. <laughs> You mean Joe ain't good to you? He's too good to me. Gee, he's sure nuts about you, all right? Yes, I know. How about you? Oh, Millie, I shouldn't have done it. What do you mean, married? It wasn't fair. I don't see that he's got any kick coming. I know. But just the same, it was all wrong. It was all my fault. I got you into this mess. Oh, no, you didn't. I went in with my eyes open. Well, one thing, you sure got a swell bunch of rocks out of it. That's more than I've ever done. Come on, I want to try my luck. Dick! Jenny. Well, you look so different, I hardly recognize you. Dick, I've got to tell you something. Something you misunderstood. Well, there's really nothing I'd care to hear. Say, listen, you little punk. A guy that won't listen to the truth has something wrong with him. Jenny was framed by Martin, the double... I presume puppy. you know you're talking about my father. Yes, I'm wise to all that. Please, Millie, stop. Stop my eye. I've just started. This is something I've been saving for a long time. You saw her in a joint drunk, didn't you? And you condemned her before you knew the truth. Well, she was hungry. She hadn't eaten for two days, and she was framed. Now, just a minute, Millie. Be quiet. This is something you ought to know, too. Go on. Oh. Dick, I want you to know my husband. Dick Hamilton? Uh-huh. 
Well, you're not welcome. Get out. Gladly. I don't know why we ever came to this joint in the first place. I don't want to talk to you. Asked him to meet you here, didn't you? No, Joe, certainly not. Still love him, don't you? No. You're lying. Hey, Tuffy. Go on in the office and get Jenny away from Joe. Before he does something, he'll be sorry for. Go on, you big lunk. Do your thinking afterwards. You're acting like a jealous fool. And what were you pleading with him about? Tell me that. I was only trying to tell him something he misunderstood. Something that happened long before I met you. Oh, that was all. What do you want? That Humboldt kid slipping his chips in late again. I think you ought to talk to him. Throw him out. And don't come busting in here again. I'll send for you when I want you. All right, so. So you don't love him, huh? No, I told you that. Yeah, but I don't believe you, like every other dame. All you're after is the dough. Please, Joe. You're hurting me. But you'd make a sap out of me, didn't you? Well, what about it? He threw me out. Oh, the... Oh, I'm worried about that kid. Keep that mob out of here and go get the cop. Deader than a doornail. You didn't do it, did you, Jenny? No, no, no. Oh. Leave that lay. Don't touch that, you sap. You want your fingerprints all over it? Don't yell at me, you egg. And you was out to get him, sister, and you sure done it. Mm. Yes? What is it? A lady to see you, sir. Oh. Well, who is it? What what time is it? A Miss Sprague, sir. And it's only nine o'clock. Oh, well, tell her I can't see her. I, I haven't slept a wink all night. Yes, sir. You can't go in I there. I haven't seen anybody stop me. I'm sorry, sir. What's the meaning of this? I've got to see you right now, that's all. Any later won't do. Shall I put her out, sir? Say, so you lay a hand on me, and I'll sock you so hard your shirt will run up your spine like a window shade. It's about Jenny. Get a load of that. Hmm. Well, that's a little different from a cottage with roses growing around it. Maybe you think this is a good time to yap poetry, but I don't. I guess that's all it was. And bad poetry at that. Well, the thing is, are you going to help her, ain't you? Well, what do you expect me to do? The poor kid hasn't got a dime, and she's going to need lawyers and beg. You don't see nothing. In the first place, she didn't kill that guy. You mean her husband? Yes, her husband. In the second place, she wouldn't have been messed in with that gang if you hadn't gotten yellow and beat it. Are you trying to make it look as though it were all my fault? Well, I don't care whose fault it is. All I'm trying to do is to help Jenny. Oh. I am absolutely at the end of my patience. You refuse to talk frankly with us, and we're trying to help you. Don't you understand? I didn't hire you. That's not the point. If you don't mind, I'd like to know who did. We interested ourselves at the insistence of a friend. I can guess who that is. Only got one friend. Now listen to me, Mrs. Charney. Self-defense is our only plea. You killed your husband in self-defense. I did not kill him. Jenny, we go to trial tomorrow. Do you realize that? Yes. Well, unless you give us something to work on, you'll be completely at the mercy of the district attorney when you get on the witness stand. I'm not going on the witness stand. What? Now, unless you give us some help, you'll probably go to the electric chair. 
I realize that. Well, don't you care? No. I give up. There's only one thing you can do for me. What's that? Call John Martin to the witness stand. John Martin? What's he got to do with this? You'll find out. But you'll have to tell us, otherwise we won't know how to question him. I'll tell you what to ask him. In court. Do you recognize this gun? I do. Tell the court, please, what your findings were in regard to the fingerprints on this gun. The fingerprints were identical with those of the defendant. Of Jenny Jones Charney? Yes. Were there any other fingerprints on the gun? No, there were not. Thank you, that is all. Your witness. No questions. Call T.M. Kraft. T.M. Kraft, take the stand. Raise your right hand and put the left hand on the Bible. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. What's your full name? Tuffy Kraft. Take the chair. <coughs> Mr. Kraft, you knew the murdered man, Joseph Charney? Yes, sir. Me and Joe been pals for about ten years. And you were in the confidence of the murdered man. That is, he talked things over with you, did he not? Yes, sir. He told me most everything. Did he ever talk to you about his wife, the defendant? Yeah, a lot of times. He was kind of scared of her. Afraid of her? Why? Because he figured she'd plug him someday. I object. Objection sustained. Did Joe ever tell you his reason for being uh, afraid of his wife? She was always asking for diamonds, not a junk. And Joe, he'd give her anything just to keep her quiet. He's a double-crossing liar. And you say they quarreled? Yeah. Can you recall those occasions? Well, both times it was on account of this other guy what used to be her sweetie. You mean Mr. Richard Hamilton? Yeah, I guess that's the guy's moniker. What did the defendant say? That she'd plug him if he ever mentioned him. Tell me, Mr. Kraft. Were you present the night of the shooting? Yes, sir. Tell the court, please, just what happened. Well, this other guy... You mean Mr. Hamilton? Yeah, he comes into Joe's joint with a dame. Go on. Well, Jenny, she sees him, jumps up, and he starts to gab. And then Joe, he comes in, and he tells this other guy to scram. Well, that makes Jenny sore. Well, anyhow, Joe takes Jenny into his office. Well, then Millie... Millie? Who is Millie? You know Millie Sprague? She's a hostess over at Joe's joint. Continue, please. Well, she says, Tuffy, you better go in there. It looks like a fight. So I goes in. Well, Joe, he tells me to beat it. Well, then I see the dame has a gap. You mean Mrs. Charney had a revolver? Yes, sir. That's enough. Your witness. What is your business, Mr. Kraft? Well, I make deals. What kind of deals? Oh, racing, things and such. You're a gambler. Yes. I object, Your Honor. Checks and sustained. You say you heard the defendant twice. Will you tell the court when that was? Well, I don't remember the exact dates, but... Once was in the apartment, and the other time was the match you killed him. I asked the court to strike the last half of that answer from the record. The witness did not see the defendant kill her husband. Change that to read the night of the murder. The second threat you say occurred in Joe Charney's office. Yes, sir. The time you saw the defendant with the gun. Yes, sir. What'd she say? That she'd plug him if he didn't quit talking about her, sweetie. Those were her words? As near as I remember. Had you any reason for wanting the deceased out of the way? I object. Sustained. There was a second door into the office, was there not? Yes. Who had keys to that door? Well, there was only one, and Joe, he had Are it. you sure of that? As far as I know. Was that door always kept locked? Yes, sir. To your knowledge, did, did the deceased have any enemies? Well, you see, a guy what's in a racket always has somebody. You know, know who those enemies were? No, sir, I don't. You were in the and he never told you who his enemies were? No, sir, he did. <laughs> Earlier in the evening, before the murder, you and two associates of yours went to Joe Charney's apartment, didn't you? I object, Your Honor. The question is irrelevant, immaterial, and has no bearing on the case. What point is defense trying to make with this line of questioning? That someone other than the defendant was implicated in the murder. Objection overruled. Will you uh, tell the court the object of your visit to Joe Charney's house just before the murder? Sure. 
We was going to deliver a diamond bracelet that Joe was given to his wife. Why don't you take these other two men with you? Well, uh, sort of a bodyguard. You see, them rocks have weighed 10,000 berries. Oh, uh, was the meeting with Joe Charney altogether friendly? Why, sure. You deny, then, that you had an argument with Joe. I wasn't arguing, I tell you. Might have been a meta guy. Who were the other two men? Bill Decker and Charlie Benson. Well, tell the court what you were arguing about. I wasn't arguing, I tell you. It was them. Very well. What was it about? Well, I don't just remember. But I think it was about the diamonds costing too much dough. You refuse to remember what else? I don't remember. That's all. The state has no further witnesses. Call John Martin. John Martin, take the stand. Raise your right hand, put your left hand on the Bible. You saw well, the first testimony you're about to give, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. What's your full name? John Martin. Take a chair. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Yes, I do. You know the defendant in this case, do you not, Mr. Martin? Yes, she was in my employ. I discharged her for impertinence. Was this impertinence you referred to the result of your having her trailed by private detectives? It was my duty to see that Mr. Hamilton didn't marry someone who was not a good woman in every respect. You believe then that Jenny Jones Charney, the defendant, is not a good woman? Well, I had reason to believe she was not a truthful one. Did you instruct your detectives to get something on Jenny Jones? Well, uh, I told them to learn whatever they could. Your Honor. I have no desire to appear in this case. I don't understand why I've been dragged into it. You'll kindly answer the questions put to you by counsel, Mr. Martin, without further comment to the court. I apologize for the witness, Your Honor, and uh, ask the court's indulgence for a moment. Granted. We're gaining nothing by this. Please continue. Mr. Martin, uh, what were the findings of your private detectives? Such as to convince me that Jenny Jones was a thoroughly bad girl. That's a lie! The defendant will kindly refrain from any more such demonstrations. Counsel, continue. You uh, have a daughter of your own, have you not, Mr. Martin? I have. And she is now engaged to Richard Hamilton, is she not? I object, Your Honor. The question has no bearing on the case. I must confess to being at complete loss as to the motive of defense in questioning this gentleman. However, I'm resigned to indulging the defense still further in the hope that the motive will appear. Your answer, Mr. Martin. Yes, my daughter is engaged to Richard Hamilton. How would you like to have your daughter, your own flesh and blood, in the place of Jenny Jones? Objection, Your Honor. I think the witness should answer, Your Honor. I can't see what possible bearing it can have on the case. Objection sustained. That's all. Your witness. No cross-examination. A guy can't hang around this joint all day. You go when we go. I don't want to be in until we can use our way out. I ask you gentlemen to realize that the state has utterly failed to make a case against Jenny Jones Charney. Can we conscientiously take the word of this confessed getter, Mr. Kraft, against this girl whom the world has used so cruelly? Innocent, honest, clean. Can we say the same thing for this man, the state's principal witness? What are the facts in the case? There is only one. Joe Charney was shot to death. That we know. But who fired the shot? No one knows. Remember, the state has failed to produce an eyewitness. You have been listening to circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence, gentlemen, on which the state asks you to send this girl, still in her 20s and unquestionably innocent, to the electric chair. What you're saying to yourselves, her fingerprints and her fingerprints alone were found on the gun. Gentlemen, Joe Charney was a member of the underworld. He had enemies among gangsters, and gangsters know how to prevent the finding of damaging fingerprints. 
We have told you how those murderous shots were fired from the door behind Jenny's back. How the gun was thrown into her lap and how innocently she picked it up and left those damaging fingerprints upon it. I ask you to look at this girl. This girl accused here today of murder. And if you see anything there but innocence, truth and gentility, then my judgment of human nature has become strangely warped. But if on the contrary, gentlemen, you see here a hard, cruel, bad, ruthless woman capable of pointing a gun at a man's heart and pulling the trigger, then go to your jury room and find any verdict you see fit. I thank your honor. Your honor. Gentlemen of the jury, you've been kept far too long listening to a plea as emotionally dramatic as it was false. I shall endeavor to be brief. I have been studying the murders in this case throughout the entire trial, which I presume you have also. In my many years of experience before the bar, I have never encountered, not even in the hardest criminal, a person totally lacking in human emotion and remorse, a gangster's mob, a gunwoman, a cold-blooded murderess who slew the husband who loved and trusted her. And why? What was her motive? Because a former lover had come back into her life. A man who she still loved, even though the wife of Joseph Chuck is why she wanted her husband out of the way. I realize the difficulty under which the learned counsel for the defense has labored to save his client. A client so guilty, gentlemen, that she did not dare take the witness stand in her own defense and face the prosecution. And now, gentlemen, in conclusion, I am sure that when you have considered the testimony in this case, you cannot do other than be convinced that this woman accused of a capital crime is guilty as charged. Gentlemen of the jury, you have listened attentively to the arguments of counsel. I now charge you that you are to disregard everything that you have heard during the course of this trial, save only the actual facts immediately bearing upon the case. Even if you are convinced that the defendant has been a gunwoman, a gangster's member that she is not on trial for her morals, she is being tried here for the murder of her husband, and the only point for you to decide is whether in the private office of Joseph Charney, she did there willfully and deliberately fire three shots into his body and kill him. That is all. You will now retire and consider your verdict. Everybody rise. Hey, don't be in a hurry. You're going with us. Jenny. Yes, Dick. I want you to know the way. And I'm ready to do whatever I can. Thanks. If you care about anything else. I'll be waiting for you. There's no use waiting. They're not going to turn me loose. But I'll never forget you, Dick. Come, Mrs. Charney. Never. We did the best we could. Well, it wasn't good enough. Hey, what's eating you guys anyway? Double crossing it, eh? Why, you guys are all wrong. I ain't done nothing. No, you ain't done nothing. But you're going to squeal on Bill when they put the clamps down on you. Wait till they straighten out that broken English of yours. Now, was... oh, wait a minute. I ain't done nothing at all. It's the last time, see? Now come out with the rest of that dough. What dough? You know what I'm talking about. That dough you got from the Budwine's gang for laying Joe off. I gave you what I said I would. Well, we want it all. Well, where do I come in? Like that, you rat. Come on, boys, take him. Come on. Come on. Gentlemen of the jury, have you arrived at a verdict? 
We have, Your Honor. What is it? We find the defendant guilty as charged in the indictment. The prisoner will stand. You have heard the verdict of the jury. Have you anything to say before sentence is pronounced upon you? I have. I'll listen to what you have to say. I am not guilty of the murder of Joe Charney. For weeks before the trial, the newspaper men begged me for my story. They offered me a lot of money. I've said nothing because I want to tell it as it is, and not from the witness stand where the lawyers distort the truth. My father deserted my mother soon after they were married. Her letters to him were returned, and his lawyers wrote her that the marriage had been annulled. I learned all this two years ago when my mother died. All our lives we know nothing but poverty and struggle. I came here, and I made it my business to find out if the marriage had been annulled. I found that it had, that it was legal and told. I also found that he married again and had a daughter. To spare this girl, my half-sister, from shame and sorrow, I kept my identity secret. I met Mr. Hamilton. We fell in love. And we would have been married if it hadn't been for one man who separated us for his own selfish purpose and who is responsible for my position today. That man is my own father, John Martin. Your Honor, obviously this woman's story has no bearing on the case. Your Honor. Mr. Clark. I move for a mistrial. Had I been equipped with the information just conveyed to me by the defendant, I should have proceeded very differently. I believe in time I can prove her innocent. There is nothing in the story we have just heard that has any bearing upon the indictment of the state. And while I believe in justice tempered with mercy, I find it impossible to grant your request. The defendant has had a fair trial and has been found guilty. May I interrupt your honor for a moment and let the court know that new evidence has just been discovered in this case? Unless it has direct bearing on the case, the court doesn't wish to hear it. Well, the murderer of John has just been arrested. On what evidence? Me and these two officers overheard him, big boy, when he was trying to collect from the guy that hired him to commit the murder. Why, well, he and his pal was just about ready to croak Tuffy because of what he said here in court, and it all came out and we was in on it. What I is protest, right. Your Honor, this is contrary to all legal procedure. That woman is not in the witness stand. Don't you point your finger at me, you big palooka. You can't fry Jenny just because my Annie Faye ain't parked where you think it should be. <laughs> <laughs> this woman is guilty of contempt. Oh, That's think so. Your Honor, I 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 Hello, Jenny, old kid. Gee, I thought they never was gonna let you out of that can so we could see you again. I say, you would have died laughing if you could see how nervous this guy's been ever since that trial ended in a free-for-all. <laughs> I thought he was gonna have twins or something. Say, if no one's gonna listen to me, I'm gonna get out of this joint before I get 10 years for talking to myself. Jenny. Dick. Say yes. Say yes to what? Oh, anything. Just say yes. Yes. Will you always say yes? Yes, yes, yes. Darling. 